Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at the uh, drivers that I'm going to call the Starfield drivers going forward. Uh, I call them that because they were released for the uh, release of Starfield, so it's the kind of latest release from Asus that we've gotten from our graphics drivers for god knows how long. So I'm going to be comparing them against my test that I did on August 23rd uh, for when I did my 780M uh, or the 7840U drivers update on the Z1E on the ROG Ally. Uh, so I'm going to take those August 23rd results of the Z1E results and be comparing them to the Starfield drivers currently. Uh, I have this screen pulled up here so you can see a little bit of my process. So you can see like here I'm making my charts and whatnot. And then on the right hand side, this is all just pure data here. So anything you see here uh, is a run basically. So any set of numbers. So here's like my 720p, my 900p runs, my 1080p runs. But you can see even on Dirt 5, like a highly repeatable benchmark, or even Call of Duty, you can see the variations that we have in the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows. And sometimes we can get a pretty big variation in the FPS average overall as well, depending on the benchmark, depending on the game. Hitman 3 is a little bit more variable in some of its benchmark sequences, so we do get a more variable FPS average. Uh, it, but at time, well, honestly, like here, it's hitting 27 across the board. So it will vary with game, but that's why any like kind of benchmark or but I don't want to call myself any professional by any means. I'm far from it. But anybody that's doing any kind of serious benchmarking should be doing more than one run and not just going based off of, oh, yeah, well, this section of whatever did OK, so it should be OK. No, you need to be doing repeatable runs because as shown here, not every single benchmark, even a repeatable benchmark will result in the same result every time. Okay, so real quick before we get into like the full on video, I am going to be running a giveaway in this video. So it's going to be a giveaway for a game code. What happened is uh, I've been trying to do this for a week because I bought a fanatical like back to school bundle, I think it was, or on the go bundle for five games. You get five mystery games. They don't tell you what the codes are at all until you redeem them. So even when you buy it and then you get the code, they don't tell you what it is. So I uh, bought the game pack, I got five codes, I gave two to my wife, which were like indie games uh, that they ended up being, and she's into them, so that's perfect. Uh, I redeemed one for myself, which ended up being Bioshock Infinite, which I didn't have on Steam, and I've honestly never beaten, so that's perfect. Uh, I gave another one to my buddy, and then this fifth one I tried to redeem for myself. However, uh, it won't let me redeem it because I already have the game in my library. So it won't tell me what the game is. Uh, it doesn't tell you, hey, this is the game and this is what you have in your library and there's no other way of finding out what this code is unless somebody redeems it. So what's going to happen with this giveaway is I got a new tattoo recently. Uh, what you're going to have to do is in this video comment, uh, like you're going to see it at some point, not right now, but for the speed run strat, I guess you could like kind of skim through and see the little preview window and see when you're going to see some arms or whatever, or some hands. Uh, so what you're going to have to do is name the tattoo and name where it's from. That's all I'm going to give you like details wise on the tattoo. It shouldn't be too hard to kind of figure out, honestly, if you're kind of nerdy geeky like whatever you want to call those things you should probably pick it up pretty quick if you're the first person to guess the tattoo correctly you say hey this is the tattoo this is where it's from uh what you're going to have to do you'll make a comment and then i'll reply so i'll reply the code in three comments so it's not going to be in one comment like here's the code in one shot so if you're going to do it just kind of be ready and kind of be ready over the weekend to get like get the code basically given to you piecemeal so i'm going to give it to you one two three i'm not going to space it out over like five minutes five minutes five minutes i'm just going to go boom 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 three comments so hopefully any bots shouldn't be able to scrape it or anything like that and then you're going to be able to grab it now if you respond or if you're the first person to get the to guess the uh, tattoo and it takes me over 45 minutes from your initial comment to respond, I'm going to give you a five minute warning. So what's going to happen is I'm going to message or comment, sorry, on your comment saying, hey, five minute warning. From that moment I hit send, I'm going to count down five minutes and then I'm going to do the same thing with the code. So I'll do one shot of the first block, another comment of the second block, and then the third uh, comment finally of the third block of the code and that's how the giveaway is going to work so if you're into that then uh, by all means participate uh, 
good luck and hopefully it's a good game for you. I apologize if it's a not so good game. Uh, my one stipulation is that I would hope that you would tell me what the game is just so I can know. Uh, I would appreciate that. But if you're mean spirited or whatever, I guess you could withhold that information and I just would forever not know. Uh, so either way, it doesn't matter, I guess. All right, so diving into the results here. So starting off with Wonderlands, uh, just to let everyone know, uh, these are all three run averages. Again, like I mentioned earlier uh, in the beginning of the video, uh, things to note that also core isolation is turned off and the virtualization is turned off as well. I will leave a link to my D bloat video. Uh, if anything to take away from that D bloat video, don't do any of the tweaks or anything like that. Just disable core isolation. That will be your biggest performance gain advantage right there. Now, getting into the results here, we can see that Wonderlands, uh, Rectex 12, medium, uh, no FSR, old versus new, uh, we got a 23.52% gain at 1080p. Uh, and honestly, at 720p, 900p, we didn't see that much of a gain. We actually saw a loss in the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows, uh, mainly in the 1% lows, rather. Uh, but then going into 1080p testing, that's when we did see the gain. And again, uh, sorry, these tests were all done at four four gigabytes of VRAM. Now going on to DirectX 12 again for Wonderlands at 15 watt instead of 30 watt. We can see here that at 1080p, we got a 30% gain uh, increase or almost just over 30%. And then at 900p, we actually did see a gain of 6.43%. Uh, going into 720p, we honestly didn't see that much of a gain on anything really. Uh, so now going over to Hitman 3, this is more of like a CPU intensive benchmark I find uh, with all the physics and everything's going on. But even then at 30 watts, we still got a 6.2% increase at our FPS averages. And then honestly, our 1% lows were higher at the 720p as well. Uh, but then going to 900p, 1080p, the averages were about the same. Uh, but going to the averages for uh, 1080p directly, it was a little bit higher for the averages minus the 1% 0.1% lows. Uh, going over to Hitman 3, 15 watt, we can see that we gained a 12.48% uh, increase from 720p for our FPS averages. And we can see that 720p, or sorry, 900p and 1080p were mostly even. Uh, we did gain some in the 0.1 and 1% lows in these dry, in the new drivers, what I'm calling the Starfield drivers. So we can see here Gears 5, this is where we also got like kind of more of an abnormal gain. So doing this, we got a 15.94% increase at 720p, but then performance kind of leveled out at 900p and 1080p. Uh, what is happening here though is uh, you can see that the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows were phenomenal on the Starfield drivers. Uh, but I even did a test run of six gigabytes of VRAM and that didn't seem to do any much of our perform uh, for performance gains. It actually pretty much got us nearly identical results if anything we got worse 0.1 percent lows uh, so if if you are the type of person to run a higher vram i would honestly just suggest running five gigabytes of vram i wouldn't go higher than that on the rog ally now going over to gears of war 15 watt same thing with the uh, six gigabyte vram test at the bottom there except this time the 0.1 percent lows were flipped uh, but we did get a 15.24 percent increase at 720p uh, 1080p and 900p we were getting about the same performance uh, but our one percent lows were actually better and the 0.1 percent lows were uh, honestly a little bit worse at 1080p and 900p now going over to forza horizon 5 we did get a little bit of an increase i didn't chart this one out just to sake of saving time it was a I don't know, probably in the neighborhood of a six to eight percent increase, something like that, uh, at 720p. Correct me in the comments if I'm terribly wrong on that. I'm sure I am. Uh, but we did get an increase at 900p as well as 1080p. And again, our one percent lows were phenomenal, and especially our 0.1 percent lows. So those are going to be the moments of like extreme, like kind of stutters or like shader cache type stutters if you're used to playing like Tears of the Kingdom. Now going over 15 watt, we did see that the gains were still there. Uh, we did get gains at 900p and 1080p, as well as a smaller gain slightly at 720p. Now going into Dirt 5, now if you recall with this one, uh, in the previous testing of the 7840U drivers on the ROG Ally, Dirt 5 we actually lost performance going to the 7840U drivers. I can't recall the exact percentages, but the video's linked there if you're curious. Um, I wouldn't recommend using those drivers anyway, but if you're just the curious type. But we did get a 10% pretty well 
pretty well across the board uh, increase. And again, the 0.1% lows and 1% lows were phenomenal in this title. Now, going to 15 watts, we can see that we got an actual 17% increase at 1080p, which is, again is phenomenal. Look at those 1% lows. They're just, <laughs> they're amazing, right? Like compared to the old drivers. And that's what a lot of people are reporting is just like the consistency and the games just feel smoother to them. Like the gameplay is a lot smoother and that's what they're noticing is basically the frame time is just tightened up because the 1% the the one percent lows are not as low. Again, the 0.1% lows are going to be like those kind of hard, hard moments of stutter and lock up like shader compilation type stutter if you're like, again, like playing Tears of the Kingdom. 1% uh, lows are the frame rate 1% of the time. And then the 0.1% lows are the frame rate 0.1% of the time, basically. That's what it that's what it means anyway so going over to cyberpunk we didn't see too much of a gain uh, but it did carry over the story of uh, getting us better one percent and 0.1 percent lows now going to 15 watt we can see the same thing that our overall fps averages were pretty well neck and neck but the one percent lows and 0.1 percent lows were brought up to be about the same uh the or to be better my apologies these are the steam deck presets uh fsr quality is used on cyberpunk here uh not fsr auto and the steam deck preset i forgot to uh title that in but i will do it in the uh after post here that you're seeing now now moving on from that to borderlands 3 this is like kind of the attention grabber this is where we got the 60.72 percent increase going from 720p uh on the old drivers to 720p on the starfield drivers and then even at 1080p and 900p as well we got a gain as well but going from 1080p we got a 47.9 uh, 0.09 percent increase going from the old to the starfield drivers now we can see here borderlands 3 at 15 watt we didn't get as big of a performance increase uh, percentage wise but we still got a pretty sizable increase regardless and the 24 percent and 37 uh, percent respectively for 720p and 1080p and that honestly kind of wraps up my performance charts i didn't want to do all the games because not all the games are going to see performance uh, increases across the board uh, but honestly just let me know what your guys experience has been like with those one percent lows uh, basically have you guys been noticing less moments of stutter has gameplay felt smoother to you uh, you're not getting like those kind of juddery movements as much just let me know in the comments how gameplay has been feeling to you in other games other than starfield if you're able to kind of peel yourself away from that game if you're interested in my starfield performance i've done a complete deep dive on that and i'll link that video down below as well All right, and to end the video off, I'm going to just show you like a little bit of my setup here and how I capture the footage. So what I have it is running to my JSOX dock. So JSOX actually sent me over the uh, their docking M.2 station. Uh, so it comes with a couple of USB ports, uh, Ethernet, and then it does come with HDMI out. And then of course, that M.2 NVMe expansion port uh, in the back there. So it does come with a heat sink and, uh, or thermal pad, sorry. And they were kind enough to send me over the one terabyte version. So I've been using that basically as my kind of game testing drive area uh, so basically I just kind of run all my games off of that hard drive from when I'm doing my benchmarks and then kind of keep everything separate from the ally hard drive so hopefully there's kind of like no mixing up or weirdness with drivers but it's much much easier than using a hard drive like this where you can see I need to unscrew this hard drive every time I want to change the actual hard drive inside and then you can see here in the uh, Ugreen video or not you green video sorry the you green uh, enclosure uh it is easy to access so i will give them that but it's just something that you have to plug in every time or kind of remember to plug into your dock or it takes up a spot on your dock or whatever uh so with the jsox dock at least with that i can put that out to uh, my monitor and if i could figure out how to get this back in that would be lovely there we go my goodness so we can see here that uh outputting my uh, jsox dock here to my obs setup i'm playing tears of the kingdom here uh so just speaking a little bit about like performance in these latest drivers uh so using tears of the kingdom here we can see that some of the graphical glitches or all the graphical glitches sorry of those black lines if you're familiar with tears of the kingdom emulation on the rog ally uh using the old kind of rdna3 drivers that we were using uh they were producing black artifacting lines on the ground and this was kind of like my biggest kind of point here was on this uh hill here is where i would be getting them but you can see here and i'm capturing the direct footage as well so i'll show that so you can see it clearly that there is no black line artifact 
artifacting on these official updates now. So Tears of the Kingdom um, emulation wannabes uh, rejoice. Uh, you can now finally play without those black graphical artifacts. So there's your fix for that. So just speaking in performance in general with these drivers, I would say that the 1% lows, the 0.1% lows, uh, they are brought up quite a bit uh, performance wise. So as we could see, like with Cyberpunk, they were brought up, but then there was the outliers with like Borderlands where we got that insane like 60% increase over the old drivers, which again, we got that same increase with the 7840U drivers. Uh, so my new recommendation, obviously, or my recommendation always is to use the official drivers unless you're into the ones that were like tinkering, like, oh yeah, I want to play Tears of the Kingdom, get rid of the uh, black artifact lines. Uh, but now you don't need to. You can just use the official drivers and you can see here that, yep, we're not getting any artifacting at all all so that is always a big plus uh, in my opinion because tears of the kingdom is a fantastic game and i'm purposely showing this using poor performance because you can get much much better performance out of this game this is just not optimized on purpose my optimization of tears of the kingdom video will hopefully come out tomorrow or the day after this video is posted uh, because that's when i'm going to be starting work on doing the actual full uh putting together of that video so anyway uh, again just to point out thanks again to uh, jsox for kind of helping helping me out with this dock setup here. And in general, if you're just having a good time uh, with your new favorite games, if you're getting better experience, smoother gameplay, let me know. Let me know in the comments, uh, let us know. And as always, to close out these videos, I just want to give a huge shout out to my new members uh, or my existing members. Uh, I got ahead of myself there. So I have GOEVR, Rico1217, Amoa, Darkstar, Roy Watney, or Roy Wayne, I believe. And I have a new member, uh, Root Access. So thank you for joining the member team there, Root Access. I apologize. It's probably not going to be the most plentiful thing that I've, you've ever <laughs> done in your life or a uh, reciprocal thing you've done in your life, but it is very much appreciated in every bit of that you guys give to me goes directly back into the channel um so i can't stress enough like thank you so much it, it means more to me than you'll ever know and as well for everyone taking the time out of their busy days out of all the stuff that they could be watching on youtube or doing whatever wherever else playing starfield or who cares uh thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to take the time to watch my video as always i hope you all have a great day